Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Type Repair video. In today's episode, we'll be working on a A1502 2015 model. Uh, this was sent to us for a mail-in repair. As you can see, the battery actually had what looked like a small fire. If you look on uh, the bottom case here, as well as the battery connection board here, uh, which is pretty scary. Don't know if that happened during shipping or when the client had it, but as soon as we got it, uh, we took the bottom case off just to take a look because the box smelled a little funny, which if you've ever smelled a lithium ion, ion fire uh, or any sort of electronics fire, you know that smell. Uh, so we went ahead and took the bottom case off and unplugged the battery right away. And that's when we noticed the damage here, of course. Uh, so we'll go ahead and replace the battery and double check that the board and everything else is is good here so let's go ahead and get into it all right so normally you'd have to unplug the bag battery first but like i said uh, due to the damage and the nature of how this unit arrived uh, we went ahead and removed the battery i uh, sorry unplugged the battery so we're going to start with a t5 screwdriver here we're going to remove these two screws here holding on this retention plate uh, this plate covers the uh, io board and the trackpad flex cables we're going to have to remove uh, both of those just to make it easier here so we're going to then use a spudger here and just pop the trackpad cable up and flip this little tape cover up. Click the retention bar up and pull our trackpad cable out. Next, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the IO board flex cable here. And you don't have to remove this side, you can if you want to, uh, but I'm gonna leave it in. And then underneath it is gonna be this connection here. Uh, this is the left-hand speaker. We're gonna disconnect this. This just makes it easier to get the battery out if we remove this in this step, as well as the right-hand speaker over here. And now we're gonna take a T5 screwdriver again and remove these three screws on each speaker uh, that hold them in. Uh, since this battery was already replaced, it looks like they didn't put one screw back in. So we're going to skip that missing screw. Now we're going to pull our speakers out. Which this one's actually wedged in in the battery because the battery is installed a little incorrectly, uh, which could have resulted in the fire. We'll check it out here. There we go. As well as this speaker on the right hand side here. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this screw here on the right hand side. This holds in the battery connection board. And now we're all set to start prying the battery out. So normally I'd recommend uh, using some isopropyl alcohol in a small bottle like this, going around the battery to help loosen the glue and make it easier to take the battery out. Given that there was a fire and some sort of battery uh, breach or problem here, I'm not gonna use isopropyl alcohol as that could damage it further, uh, resulting in a fire or anything like that. So we're gonna very gently use a flat edge spudger and start prying uh, the left and right cells of the battery out. And then we're gonna move on to the middle one. All right, so now that we have both the left and right cells free, we're going to move on to the center one. I find it easiest to start from the top here. Sometimes the bottom really depends. Uh, the side can be pretty hard, but this one looks like it might be easier. Uh, whatever you're more comfortable with, uh, you can try all different angles here. All right, so there we are. That's our bad battery removed. And you can see kind of the after effects of that small battery fire that happened here. All right, so I'm gonna come in close and kind of show you guys what happened here. So as you can see, right above my pinky here, uh, the short actually happened here. So whoever bought this battery, seems like it was either a bad battery from the factory. I don't think this was a misinstallation. Unfortunately, it looks like there's either too much pressure or something was soldered incorrectly, maybe too much flux on there, uh, but it definitely shorted itself. It actually cracked the PCB right there because it got so hot when it did short. Uh, so not something you're looking for. Uh, if you guys wanna make sure you're sourcing good batteries, you're not gonna have any issues. Uh, check us out at techdep.com. Uh, we have batteries that will not light your computer on fire for sure. Uh, we also offer mail-in repair, data recovery service, anything you need. Check us out at techdep.com. All right, so we're going to clean up a little bit of the residue that's left over from that lithium ion fire. We're just going to use some paper towel, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Now we're going to start the bottom case here. Just clean that off. And we're going to move on to the actual logic board and clean this off here. Uh, we're hoping that the logic board is okay on this, given the severity of it 
in the location to 50 50 to be honest we're gonna hope that everything is okay on here the reason we want to clean off this residue is that they could have ions in it uh, which when this board powers up could of course you know hit traces bridge capacitors cause another short uh, or more damage you just want to make sure you clean it off really good uh, we actually are going to use some q-tips and cotton swabs to get in here as well so the next step is a bit of a tedious one. We're gonna go ahead and remove all of these adhesive strips here and prep the top case for the new battery. So to do this, I like to use isopropyl alcohol, just kind of hose it all down. It helps uh, weaken the bond it has on the top case and of course soften it so it's easier to scrape off. I'll be using this tool here. If, you're, if you don't have one or are looking for one, I highly recommend these to remove any sort of adhesive off uh, any real top case or anything like that. Uh, we do sell these at techtup.com as well as any other parts or tools you may be looking for. Check us out. All right, so now that we have everything all clean here, we're actually gonna reinstall the speakers first, uh, just to make sure that the battery lines up correctly. These are kind of your outside guides. Uh, that's why I like doing these before I install the battery. There we go. As well as the left-hand side speaker. I'm gonna leave the cable just like that till I get the rest of the battery in. I'm just gonna put one screw in on each side. So now we have our guide points in, uh, which are the, the speakers here. We're gonna take our new battery, peel off the bottom cover here. And there's two ways to install this. So you can either line uh, the controller board and the battery connection point up first, or you can line up the bottom because it does slide under both these speakers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the bottom first by sliding in this battery like so. Again, you don't have to press all the way down until you're sure it's in place. But if you do everything right, it will line up just like so. So this is a little incorrect. So I'm gonna take my pry one more time here, wherever it went. We're gonna lift this guy up just a little bit to the left, our spudger and move him left and then press them down. There we are. So as you can see, we're not gonna plug it in right now, but that's lined up correctly. Our screw points lined up correctly. So we're gonna take our T5 and this battery retaining screw for this retention or the daughter board here. We're gonna screw it into place. We're gonna screw the rest of the speakers into place as well. Press down on the battery. That right speaker is already plugged in. Before we plug in the I.O. board, we do have to plug in the speaker, which runs underneath it. There we are. Now we're gonna plug in that I.O. board, take our trackpad flex cable, feed the ribbon cable end into the trackpad daughter board here. We're gonna go ahead and lower the retention bar, put the tape cover back down, connect the trackpad. Take our retention plate here and the two T5 screws associated secure them in place. So now before we put the bottom cover on, we're gonna go ahead and grab a charger and connect the battery, make sure everything charges and powers on correct, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so now that we have our charger, we're first gonna connect the battery here. And take off the sticker just to line it up a little bit better. There we are. Place the sticker back down on top just to protect it and plug in our charging cable. It went green, as long as it goes orange. Okay, good, so now we're charging. We're gonna go ahead and open it up, make sure it powers on. All right, looks like the battery's really dead here. Right, so we're gonna give it just a minute. All right, so it looks like it's now powering on, got enough juice in there. We're just gonna make sure it boots to the desktop here just about there there we are looks good to me so it's at two percent as you can see the battery was extremely dead uh, but other than that looks good to go alrighty so we're gonna put the bottom panel on clean that off real quick here 
So our last step here is just to take our pentalobe screwdriver and secure all the screws all the way along the unit. All right, but that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll be sure to assist you. If you saw any parts or tools you need in the video, check us out at techtep.com. Uh, click the link below for mail-in repairs. We'll see you guys in the next video.